name is Brian Mace. And continuing our studies in the Epistle of John. And today's title is Love Not the World. Continuing at 1 John, chapter 2 and verse 7. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word, which ye have heard from the beginning. And here is John, disciple of Jesus giving his eyewitness account of Jesus. Je Jesus had made such an impact upon John, such an impression, that John, even though now he was an elderly man, probably not far away from death, he was sharing his experiences that he had with Jesus. He knew the teaching of Jesus. He'd seen the miracles. And here he was, before he was going to die, sharing it, so that others down the years would have this wonderful, wonderful account that John has left us. And aren't we so thankful that in these days, we still have the written word of God before us. And there is that hungering and that thirsting after both the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, and the written word. And where would we be without them? It is this encouragement that I bring to you that as the days seemingly are so dark, yet down the centuries there have been other, other times when the days must have seemed so dark to those who, who were living at that time. And through them, instead of the church as it were being destroyed, the church became stronger. The body of Christ became stronger. That even in the midst of much persecution and suffering, it is in those times of turmoil that there is growth. Quite contrary to the, the ways and the thinking of those who are not, not of God. It's just the opposite that takes place. And that is the proof that God is God. And God is still at work, not just down the centuries, but in these days as well. Verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Who is that true light? It can be only in a person, and the person of God, God the Son. God who came into this world, brought the light, the light of God, the life of God. And it is in him that our trust is, our whole trust, not just part of the trust, but in him do we face whatever is before us. Because at the commencement of this a new year, Yes, much is made by many, but God 
whether it is the first day of the year or the last day of the year, every day in between. He is the God who changes not. For he says, I am the Lord, I change not. And we're so grateful to the writer to the Hebrews who makes us, it clear that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our trust is not in the things of this world, but in the eternal, the unchangeable God who never changes. Yes, man is fiddle. Man can be so, so changeable, but God changes not. And it is with that confidence that we go forward, not just today, but every day that the Lord gives us on earth, because when we are His, then we are looking to be in Him all the time. We are looking to be in His plan all the time. Not to stray away from it, but to move forward as He wants to move forward in us and through us, because He has no hands he has no feet, as it were, no mouths. Only those who are of his on earth. Because when Jesus returned to the glory, returned to be with his Father, the work still went on. The work which he had started, the work which John had witnessed, the work had gone on through John. It had gone on through Peter and the other disciples. It had gone on through Paul. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came. And it is that same Holy Spirit who worked through those of the early church, worked through John in giving this wonderful word that is still at work today. And that is the confidence that we have, that the Holy Spirit does not change, and the Holy Spirit lives the life that he had lived when Jesus was upon earth. That is the confidence that as we move forward in this year, every day, as he has us, then he will be able to do what he wants to do for the glory of God the Father through the Son. John, oh, constantly speaking of light. Oh, he speaks of dark as well. He that saith he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. Oh, John. Oh, yes, he knew. He knew what it was, all right. Can you remember that John, James and John, oh, they wanted to, uh, to have the highest place. They wanted to be one either side of Jesus when he, he was in, in the glory, and when they were with him. But as Jesus said to them, it wasn't Jesus who could decide that. It was the Father. And it is walking with him. Not just being as him, but walking with him too. And being prepared to accept whatever he might have whether it's the lowest place or the highest place, doesn't matter. As long as we're in the place 
where he wants us to be. The place where he can do that which he can only do through each one of us. Could only do through you. Or could only do through me. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Yes. Walking in the light. Abiding in the light. Letting nothing come between. Because when things come in between, that hinders the work of God. That he that hate of his brother is in darkness, so is so clear is John. Yes, in the early church undoubtedly he'd spotted that things were not right. And down the ages, there will have been times in churches, in groups, where things have not been right. But he's looking to walk. Walk as he walked. Walked as the Savior walked. Yes. Being in line with him. Being prepared to accept what he wants. It can be quite some quite something. Because there will be periods in life, difficult periods in life. There'll be crises in life. There will always be something which comes to seek to try and disturb. That we must look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look unto him who suffered, who endured the cross on our behalf. And in the light of Calvary, each time he will pull us through. And knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Yes, let us keep Jesus ever before us. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Oh, John knew all right. He knew what it was to be forgiven. And down the years, there's always been those who have known sins forgiven. That's the way of God. Because Jesus had to die for sinners. There was no other way. Without the cross, there's no forgiveness. Without the death of Jesus, there's no forgiveness. Without the cleansing of the blood of Jesus, there's no forgiveness. And John, he knew that. He knew that the one whom he loved so much, what he'd gone through, John would have been in the Garden of Gethsemane. He would have been one of those who was asleep, who couldn't keep awake. And the one thing that John did know, that Jesus had died. Jesus had been placed in the tomb. But John was there in the upper room 
on the day of resurrection when Jesus came into the midst and he saw that this man who died personally for him was alive and alive forevermore and he would have been there too on the day where Jesus ascended ascended into the skies ascended to go back to be with the Father and John had that confidence within him that he who had died and rose again would one day return and return for those who on the earth at that time belonged to Jesus. That's wonderful. Do you belong to Jesus? Have you that confidence that when he returns you will go with him to be presented a spotless before the Father. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him, that is, from the beginning. Yes, he was writing to the different ones. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Yes, there was that going on, day by day, moment by moment, in the midst of the conflict, in the midst of all that the accusers of the brethren would try to bring before each, each one. There would be that overcoming, whether young or old, and he was overcoming the foe. He was overcoming the wicked one. And overcoming through the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Oh, the wicked one doesn't like that. But knowing our position when we're in Christ, that it's him, and that we have a testimony. A testimony that Jesus not only died and forgave, gave us, but Jesus is alive today. And by the Holy Spirit, he's still alive and lives in those who are his. That's how the work of God continues. Through those who have received the Holy Spirit. Those who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, baptized into Jesus. And then we know. We know whom we have believed and are persuaded that he is able to keep us. Yes, not just today, but right through the moment when we leave this earth and are presented spotless as though we have never sinned unto the Father. I write unto you little children because ye have known the Father. It is wonderful whether the old or younger children all can come to know the Father through the Son. I have written to you, fathers, because ye have known him. Ye have known Jesus Christ from the beginning. 
I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. Oh, not strong in ourselves. No, human flesh will never stand. But strong in him. His strength is made strong. When we know we are completely and utterly dependent upon him. And the word of God abideth in you. The word of God. Yes, the one who is the living word abiding in us. And the written word, and as we speak out the written word, oh, there is that power, there is that strength. And what does the evil one not like? He doesn't like to hear the word of God. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Here is John with a strong word. The word that I brought right at the beginning. Love not the world. Because what? What is the world? It is just the opposite to the kingdom of God. Because the God belongs to the God of this world. It is of, of the kingdom of Satan. And its values are just the opposite to those of God. Things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Very strong here is John. And what could be more wonderful, more marvellous, than to know the presence of God. To know God as a living person. To know God as reality. To know God just as well as we know our own family or our own friends. To know him even better. That is what God gives us when we receive, when we accept his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into our lives. And it's going on and on and on because there's always something more, something more to receive from his word, something more to see God at work. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Here is John confirming that, yes, the world as it is will pass away. Did not our Lord Jesus speak of, of troublous times coming, of great tribulation, of earthquakes and family, famines and wars? And there appears to be a greater increase in these days of that which he spoke about, of tribulation, of troublous times. But yet, indeed, the one who said, let your, your hearts be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Is that our confidence today? Can we say, 
We're in the world, but not of it. And can we say that no matter what comes our way, our confidence is in the unchangeable God, and that nothing, no nothing, shall separate us from the love of God. In Jesus Christ. Father, it is with that confidence that your word has spoken to us at this time. And although in the world, yes, we will have trouble, but we're not of this world. We're of the things of God. And our confidence is in the unchangeable God. And that as you work out your own plan, bringing it to its climax, bringing it to its fulfillment, and shaking all in this world which can be shaken, may there be that confidence amongst those who belong to Christ, that he lives within them. He is working in and through them. And all that is being done now and in the days ahead shall be to thy glory and to thy glory alone. For this is asked in the name above all other names, that of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.